Thank you all, and what a, a pleasure it is for me to be with you here today. You know, every year at, at MEC Hobnob, we know that we have an opportunity to get some great catfish at lunch, but the price that you have to pay is you got to listen to politicians speak between now and when that catfish is available. Um, but I promise you this, that this morning I'm going to be uh, as brief as possible, at least as brief as a politician can be. But before I get started, you know, when I think about Mississippi's movement from being a state of jackpot justice to a state of a business-friendly climate, I don't know that there was anyone any more instrumental in making that happen than our former governor, Haley Barber. As I'm sure many of you know, uh, Governor Barber was in an automobile accident last night. Um, my understanding is, in talking with the family, that he is uh, alert and responsive and is doing well. But uh, Governor Barber and his family is, are, are in the prayers of Eli and me, and I know that y'all want to keep him in your prayers as well. Now, let me begin by thanking everyone that is here. You see, we can accomplish so much when we work together, and what you're doing as a business community to help spur economic growth across this great state is truly remarkable. Across every single region of our state, from small towns to major cities, our economy is booming. In fact, our economy is thriving. Mississippi, in virtually every category, is climbing the national ladder. From economic development to education, Mississippi is rising up the leaderboard. And honestly, it shouldn't come as a surprise. Our recent string of wins wasn't by accident. It was by design. In Mississippi, we're advancing pro-growth business solutions that will drive further capital investment and lead to more meaningful careers. We're building the workforce of tomorrow through skills training today. We're delivering a dynamic, in-person education to our kids, and we're better preparing them for life after the classroom. And we're continuing to implement fiscally conservative policies that will set our state up for even more economic success in the future. And the great news is that companies are taking notice. They're seeing what's happening in Mississippi. And more and more of them are recognizing that Mississippi is not what the mainstream media portrays. I've long said, and typically it's with respect to tourism, but it's true in economic development as well, that one of the biggest challenges Mississippi faces is convincing people to come here just once. Because if we can ever convince a CEO or a tourist to come here once, they tend to really, really like what they see. And they come back again and again and again. If we can just get those prospective companies in our state, if we can just have the opportunity to sit before them and talk about our workforce, we win deals. That's because these companies see a friendly business environment that does not punish success. They see a low cost of doing business and a high level of support for job creators. And they see historic investments being made in our workforce that will make it easier for them to bring their products to market. I think back to my first State of the State address after having been elected governor. I said in that address, quote, that at the end of my time as governor, we will measure our success in the wages of our workers. We don't just want people to have any job. We want them to have a career, a family supporting career that gives them not just a paycheck, but joy. To accomplish this mission, Mississippi must invest in our people. That's what we've done during my tenure as governor, and that's what we're going to continue to do. 
When it comes to training Mississippians for the jobs of the next 50 years, our state and our team is firing on all cylinders. Since, and Scott mentioned this earlier, but since I signed legislation creating the Office of Workforce Development, Accelerate Mississippi has awarded almost $42 million to 74 new and expanding programs to help train Mississippians for high demand, good paying jobs. Jobs that matter. From advanced manufacturing to trucking, from nursing to engineering, these funds are laying the groundwork to prepare our students for the plethora of career opportunities available to them. You know, in the old days we used to say, you know, there are a whole lot of people here out looking for jobs. But now, there's a whole lot of jobs out looking for people. And that's why it's so critically important that we invest in training our people for the jobs that are available. But we're not just stopping at those skills training. We're also investing in initiatives that will help make more Mississippians, particularly students, aware of the job opportunities that exist. Last session, working with our leadership in the legislature, Mississippi invested $8 million towards career coaches. Since, the, since then, some 51 counties across our state have been able to hire an additional career coach. I spoke to almost 100 of them yesterday at one of their training sessions, and every time I see them, I become even more optimistic about what they're going to bring. You see, we have a history in our state of knowing what works. Ten years ago, when our reading results were not where they needed to be, we passed the Literacy Promotion Act, and we hired reading coaches throughout our state to help not only students, but also to help teachers teach better. Then when we needed to pick up our results in math, we hired math coaches. And so these career coaches are going to do wonderful things for our state. Now, the fact is, think back to when you were in high school. For me, <laughs> that was a long damn time ago. But when I think back to when I was in high school, I think I was a heck of a lot more worried about my three-point shot than I was about what I was going to do for the rest of my life. And I think most kids in Mississippi are probably in the same boat than I was today. By the way, when it comes to my three-point shot, I still got it. <laughs> but my vertical, <laughs> it ain't what it used to be. But that's why these career coaches are so important. Students need guidance. Students need a helping hand. We need to help them look towards the future, and that is exactly what these career coaches are going to do. The ingredients of economic prosperity are good jobs and above average wages. That pathway starts not the day after you graduate, but that pathway begins while you're in the classroom. We're going to continue to invest in innovative ways to get more workers with more skills in our workforce. What I'll tell you is the investments that we've made as a state are now paying off. We are bettering the lives of our students. In fact, today in Mississippi, we have the lowest dropout rate in our state's history, and we have the highest high school graduation rate in our state's history. Now let's think about that for a minute. The day I was sworn in as Lieutenant Governor, the high school graduation rate in America was 84.5%. Mississippi's high school graduation rate was 72%. Last year, the national average had risen from 84.5% to 86.5%. Mississippi's had risen over that same 10 years from 72.5% to 88.5%. So not only do we have the highest high school graduation rate in our state's history, we're better than the national average. Sometimes we don't brag on ourselves enough. What's happening in this state right now is truly 
remarkable. In fact, it is not only remarkable, it's special. And we ought to be proud of what's going on. We also believe, as conservatives, that we reward success. When I ran for governor, I told the teachers of this state that we were going to raise teacher pay by $4,100 a year so that we could get to the southeastern average. With the $1,000 pay raise we passed in the first two years and the $5,100 a year pay raise that we passed last year, Mississippi's teachers now not only earn above the southeastern average, but above the national average. It's because we are seeing tremendous success. Our economy is going. We're in the best fiscal shape we've ever been in. We're in the best financial shape we've ever been in. And we're investing in the reason that we're able to get there. And that's because of the remarkable work of our teachers in the classroom. But I will tell you that it does no good to educate and train Mississippians for the jobs of the future if the government is going to turn around and pass laws that stifle innovation and stifle economic growth. I'm proud of the fact that we've been able to implement common sense and fiscal conservative policies that encourage economic development and encourage economic growth. And honestly, last session was truly historic. It was a year for the record books. Not only did we pass the largest teacher pay raise in Mississippi's history, I also signed into law Mississippi's largest tax cut in Mississippi's history. Because after all, Miss government doesn't have anything that it doesn't first take from someone else. And I believe that we are all better served if you have more money in your pockets because you know better how to spend your money than any governmental entity ever will. In fact, there are nine states in America that have no income tax. I want Mississippi to become the tenth. We didn't quite get there last year. But of the 41 states in America who do have an income tax, we now have the fifth lowest marginal rate in America. That's something we ought to be proud of. And it's one more signal to, miss, to businesses across the state and across America that are looking to do business here that our state government will never tax them to death. And look, let's just be honest. Companies are taking notice. In fact, we're going to have the best economic development year in our state's history. In the eight years before I became governor, Mississippi averaged seeing $900 million a year in new capital investment. Here in late October, we've already announced in 2022 alone $3.5 billion in new capital expenditures in our state. And I got a pretty good inkling it's going to go a lot higher between now and December 31. I am also going to tell you today, as I told you last year from this stage, that while we had a historic year and the largest tax cut in Mississippi history in the 2022 session, I don't think we should stop where we're at. I plan to continue to push for the full and the complete elimination of the income tax in the upcoming session. As I've said many times before, you don't have to be a geography expert to look at a map and recognize that we have Texas to our west, Florida to our east, and Tennessee to the north. All three of those states have no income tax, and therefore all three of those states have a competitive advantage when we are recruiting for both business and industry and for individual talent, and we need to eliminate not only the income tax, but eliminate their competitive advantage once and for all. We know that last session the fiscal and the financial environment was right to do exactly that. Unfortunately, the political environment was not. This session, I hope that's not the case. You have my word that as long as I'm governor, I will never stop fighting to fully eliminate the income tax in Mississippi. Now, I believe very strongly that Mississippi's future is bright. 
In 2021, Mississippi had the largest annual increase in total employees in the last century. From June 2021 to June of 2022, we increased total employment in our state by 30,000 jobs. During the tenure that was COVID-19, Mississippi had a top 10 economy during the pandemic. We lost fewer jobs than virtually every other state in the nation. We did so because we were open for business. We did so because we said we're going to protect not only lives, but also livelihoods. We did so because we had leadership that was willing to stand up and fight for Mississippi workers. We know that unemployment rates in our state today are at an all-time low. We know that our state is now ready to handle the influx of new capital investments, the influx of new jobs, and the influx of new businesses that are coming to our great state. We're ready because we've been laying the groundwork for many, many years. My friends, we're having a record year in so many ways. But what I want you to know is that Mississippi is just getting started. We're pressing ahead in our efforts to build the best workforce in America. We're pressing ahead in our efforts to build the best education system in America. And we're pressing ahead in our efforts to build the strongest business environment in America. I have no doubt, none whatsoever, that Mississippi's brightest days are ahead of us. But I also know that we will not continue to achieve the greatest heights we've ever seen unless we're willing to sit down and work together. I want to thank you for what you're doing in your local businesses, in your local communities, in your local counties, and in your local regions to make Mississippi's economy what it is becoming. And I want to thank you for everything that you do to continue to make this great state, the place we call home, Mississippi, the best state in the nation to work, to live, and to raise a family. I'm excited about that continued partnership, and I'm excited about the economic prosperity we're going to bring to so many Mississippi families. Thank you all, and God bless.